Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Kaya Limited Q4 FY24 results conference call hosted by Dollars Capital Markets Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now on the conference over to Mr. Sachin Bobadi from Dollars Capital Markets Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Nizan. On behalf of Dollars Capital, I welcome you all to the Q4 FY24 earnings conference call of Kaya Limited. Hope you all and your family members are staying safe and healthy. From the management side, we have with us Mr. Rajiv Suri, Global Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director, Kaya Middle East, Mr. Rajiv Nair, Chief Executive Officer, Kaya India, and Mr. Aryand Bhariwal, Chief Financial Officer. Now I hand the floor to the management for their opening remarks, and then we will have question and session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. I would like to welcome you to the conference call on company's behalf. The investor presentation has been updated on our website and contains the financial, key metrics, and business updates. I hope you have had a chance to go through it. Let me begin the conference call with highlights of quarter four performance, starting with Kaya India performance. Overall, clinic business registered a 24% revenue growth over quarter four FY23. Product business at clinics registered a revenue growth of 25% over previous year quarter 4 FY23, mainly driven by categories like healthcare, skin care, and nutraceuticals. Service business registered a revenue growth of 24%, mainly driven by categories like body contouring, acne, hair care, and beauty facial. Body contouring segment continued to show robust growth of 77% over quarter 4 FY23. Healthcare category witnessed a 18% revenue growth over quarter 4 FY23. Kaya launched state of art proprietary AI based doctor app using clinical data on Indian skin in the segments of brightening and pigmentation and acne with predictive capabilities and received great customer appreciation. Use of marketing automation, which included WhatsApp bot and automated nudges to our customer base, improved the customer funnel, leading to acquisition of 3,600 plus new customers. As part of our continued Clinic Refresh Initiative, we relocated two clinics in quarter 4 FY24, making it six relocations for the year. These six relocated clinics collection grew by 81% over quarter 4 FY23. As part of our continued Clinic Refresh Initiative, we have renovated 11 clinics during the year, for which the collection grew by 21% over quarter 4 FY23. Customer count grew by 14% over quarter 4 FY23, aided by additional customer counts through omni-channel route. NPS scores continued to trend higher in quarter 4 FY24, touching 88, reflecting an amazing customer experience. Based on the improved performance and the metrics which I have just described, Clinic EBITDA improved from 21% in quarter 4, 23 to 28% in quarter 4 this year. Our other growth giver updates are as follows. We relaunched hair care with advanced diagnostic tool focused on hair growth and hair fall in quarter 4 with a completely new customer journey which witnessed 18% revenue growth. Nutraceuticals grew by 31% over quarter 4 FY23. As part of our continued clinic refresh initiative, we relocated two clinics in quarter 4. These were Alvarpet in Chennai 
and Matunga in Bombay. And both are enjoying positive customer sentiments as captured in GBP of the clinics with 4.7 star and 5 star rating respectively. On the people front, we won the best HR initiative award showcasing exceptional teamwork and dedication at the train retail awards 2024 and Asmita from our AR clinic Chennai received a prestigious award for her customer service excellence in the beauty category at the train retail awards in 2024. Now on to the financial performance for uh, India. Revenue from operations grew at a standalone level at 53 crores for quarter 4. FI24, a growth of 21% over the corresponding quarter 4 FI23. EBITDA of 2.2 crores in quarter 4 FI24 includes one time impact of INR. 7.2 crores for cost related to Middle East sales in quarter 4 FI24 as compared to one time gain of INR 5.4 crores for reversal of ESOP cost to INR 9.8 crores in quarter 4 FI23. Standard loan profit loss after tax fat AEI for quarter 4 FI24 was INR negative 95 crores after considering one-time impact of 90 crores for impairment of investment and cost related to Middle East sales as compared to profit loss after tax of negative 23.9 crores over corresponding quarter for FI23. The detailed financial information update is already with you in the uploaded investor presentation and you may refer to that for additional information on the performance. Now going on to Middle East, as, intim as intimated on 27th March 2024 to the stock exchanges, the company along with wholly owned subsidiary KME Holdings, Private Limited has entered into a definitive agreement with Romania GCC Holding Limited buyer to sell its entire shareholding in Kaya Middle East BMCC and Kaya Middle East FZE along with trademarks for perpetuity bearing the Kaya name in the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Egypt, Morocco and Iraq. The company has received shareholder approval for the set transaction on 27 April 2024. The expected date of completion of sale of shares of Kaya LCD is quarter 1 of this year and of Kaya DMCC in quarter 2 of financial year ending 31st March 2025. Short summary of Middle East Clinic. The collection grew in Middle East at 1% at constant currency versus quarter 4 FI23. Collection from body business witnessed 18% growth versus F4, quarter 4 FI23. Hair care has grown by 13% and skin glow solutions by 8%. Customer count in Middle East declined by 3% versus quarter 4 FI23. I now open the session for questions and my colleagues and I will be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants will request a PU handset for asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question key assembles. The first question is from the line of Upman New, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, Upman yeah hello thank you for taking my question so basically i uh, wanted to understand uh 
you know a trend i'm seeing you we all see this in the western world where you know botox and uh, uh other uh, plastic surgery on the face for women is the popularity is growing more and more day by day uh when do you see this trend catching up in india and how beneficial will it be for a company like kaya that's my first question my second question is related to this in your services business how much percentage of the services business does botox and other plastic surgeries etc make up of your service businesses also on the hair business i uh, wanted to understand growth prospects over there as alopecia is quite a common issue for females so wanted to understand how are we not growing basically in 2017 our revenues was at 400 crores today also our revenues at 400 crores so uh, what is could you explain this please okay uh, so uh, you, you know your question, questions are emanating from uh, the opportunity in the market uh, of our categories like botox fillers uh, and anti aging um, as an entire segment anti aging already for kaya is about 18% in india uh, largely driven by the women consumer uh, to some extent the male consumers getting in uh, it is not a democratic service in india the difference could be that a large part of the population has access to this kind of price point in other parts of the world in india maybe affordability is one of the issues uh, but we as a business today are able to offer uh, these services at a price along with uh, you know facilities for finance and other things where people are actually taking to these kind of services uh, you know to a larger extent but still it's a niche in the market overall it's about 18% mixed to our total uh, business if you look at the growth uh, you know while you mentioned that the, the growth has not happened i think if you compare the the previous year to the current year on the overall business we have seen significant amount of growth uh, which is there so overall the services business has grown by almost 24% uh, against last financial year uh, and i think we've seen uh, a successive growth even last year we had a growth and uh, this year we continue to grow to grow on that number uh now we uh, i think the entire number that you're seeing is a mix between the india middle east business and that's why probably you're not seeing the full impact of growth there you had a question on alopecia so can you just please elaborate that again no so all my questions stem to the same point is is that you know i observe these issues are becoming more prevalent in people and alopecia included and even plastic surgery is becoming more common so why are, why is it the showing in our growth I, you were saying you were saying that you were saying that you grew last two years, but the reality is from 2017 to today the revenue has been the same, but the acceptance of plastic surgery and I'm sure the increase of alopecia has been way more. So where are these people going? Are these people going to uh, independent? Uh, you know, is is a brand like Kaya losing market share to independent doctors? What is that thing? <laughs> Okay, so so I mean, if you're looking at the market growth, uh, predicted is about 17% on an average. Uh, we are growing at much more than that currently. If you were to look at the trend that we had predicted for the last five years, it's one of the slides in the investor deck as well. So I think I don't think we are losing market share at least uh, currently in terms of India. There are certain areas that you mentioned like uh, plastic surgery. We we are not in that business at all. uh we are only into minimally invasive type of service so you mentioned both of them pillars that's an area that we have hair care is a segment that you mentioned which is alopecia is an area of of uh, clear focus for us and even in the last quarter you can see that we have seen a growth of almost 21% uh, in the case of uh, like this and also the number of clinics that you are comparing uh, between 2017 and now is against 21 uh, sorry 120 clinics we are talking about 74 clinics at the moment uh, and uh, overall middle east was at 121 clinics which is the overall 95 clinics against 120 clinics of uh, 2017 so i think maybe there is an effect of that as well in terms of this thing. yeah So, okay. so maybe that's where you're probably not seeing the growth. But if you see pre-COVID to post-COVID, we have seen growth post-COVID. At the same time, we have seen a growth further on that number for the last uh, two years. Okay, and just last question on debt. How do you plan on getting this down? Uh, how much money are you receiving from the sale of your businesses? Sorry, can you please repeat the question? 
No, no, the question is on your debt. Uh, I yeah. see the country, you have around 300 crores of borrowings. Oh no, 170, 180 crores of long-term and short-term borrowing. So how do you plan on getting this down and uh, how much money will you get from the sale of your businesses? So, so the total borrowing is around 195 crores, both from directors and the quoted bank. Of the sale, 50 crores will be paid from Middle East. That precisely is the quota loan. And the remaining 145 crores would be paid when we complete the rights issue. So that is how the you know the repayment of the loan will happen. Okay, and this rights issue is happening when? So we are just waiting for the Middle East sale process to get completed. And once it gets completed, we'll give you a further update on the rights issue process. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Sen from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. So as of now, you said that we have 95 units. So out of those, how many have reached the break even? All clinics uh, in India currently are uh, EBITDA positive uh, as, as clinics. So we don't have a single clinic which is making, losing money at the moment. And all those average okay. clinic EBITDA is in this number around 28%. 28%, all right. And uh, when we say EBITDA positive, uh, so when we say break even, so we consider only EBITDA positive or uh, the entire uh, like fat positive for that clinic? No, we are talking about the clinic uh, operations profitability. So clinic capital yeah. is what we are talking about over here. Okay, so that's the break even. And going forward, what levels of margin are we uh, aspiring to stabilize upon? So we have an internal benchmark to you know get to around 30 to 32 percent of clinic capital. Right now we are at 28 percent because of some few I would say non-performing clinics. But going forward, we are looking to target to around 32 percent of clinic capital. And at company level? That's at company level. So if I take the corporate EBITDA right now, we are at positive corporate EBITDA. And I can't give you the future, you know, the numbers for the corporate EBITDA, but yeah, this is how it looks like for the current year. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Vijay, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, hi. Uh, my, my, my question is on uh, uh, the EBITDA. So um, on, on the unit level, I think you have 28 percent, right? That's what I heard. And what, what is the EBITDA at, at the company no, no, level sorry, in India? Vijay, uh, sir, your audio is breaking up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, please yes. proceed. So your EBITDA at, at unit level is around 28%, right? So what, what is the EBITDA at the company level, uh, India specific? So at India level, I would say we are around at 2 to 3% at the corporate level, the corporate EBITDA. The total, the consolidated. The, the corporate the India, corporate. And the India standalone level. Right, right, right. So, I mean, uh, so you're sharing of 26% close to, right? 25%. Uh, that's all corporate cost. And, and, the ASP. and advertising cost is also built on. We have the corporate cost and the ASP which gets out of this clinic capital. Do you think that's very high? But it's a people driven business. So that's basically, you know, kind of a fixed cost which fixed cost model. So to drive the business we need, you know, the thermat and the people at the clinic. That's why that cost is a bit high. Okay, okay. And uh, see, it's been a very long time, and uh, I think uh, at least uh, you should have you should come out with some plan, and then you know uh, uh, educate the investors because it's been too long, uh, you know, of underperformance. And uh, uh, okay, last couple of years, uh, I think at least at, at India India level, I think things have started looking uh, slightly better, but but uh, uh, we're definitely not growing at the pace that we should grow. That's the frank feeling, you know. 
and uh, um, as a shareholder it really pains because then uh, frankly and i know you don't worry about stock prices and all i don't expect you to do that but so there's a huge opportunity loss for the investors that have been ha- uh, hanging around with a lot of faith on the management and the promoter you know but it's been a huge underperformance and i think you should be like you know i think you guys should take some responsibility uh, am i right i mean is that expectation uh, wrong so we are uh, so first thank you for your uh, input and uh, we value your uh, suggestion uh, look the business uh, over the last uh, 24 uh, months uh, has grown faster than the market has grown the market is growing at 17% and uh, we've grown uh, faster than that on a CAGR basis we are uh, conscious of the fact that uh, we need to do faster and better we ended our growth this year out of revenue at about 21% uh, which again uh, given our background is quite a robust uh, growth uh, we have restarted uh, expansion in order to aid growth further uh, and uh, we opened four clinics we have uh, found uh, in the last 12 months we are opening another two we find another two clinics now and we are searching for another few more clinics So all in all, uh, we remain uh, conscious of the fact that we have to build value for uh, shareholders, and the management uh, is taking corrective action, as has been demonstrated by our previous results. In addition to the previous results of the last uh, 12 months, uh, 24 months, the expansion drive which we have uh, started, we are doing the rights issue. Uh, the rights issue will bring in more funding to the company it will retire all the debt in the company and then uh, we will have more uh, capital to expand further and invest in the company so all you know that's the game plan uh, which we have uh, over the sort of next 10 months i hope that gives you some assurance yeah, and yeah in what puzzles me is you know uh, i think uh, with this section under performance and uh, on top of it going for a right issue that means you know taking money from the market oh, again from the current mr vijay may we request that you return to the question queue for the participants okay. waiting for their turn thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one participants on in the conference if you wish to ask a question you may please press star in one the next question is from the line of saurabh shroff from qrc investment advisors llp please go ahead yes hi good evening gentlemen uh, could you uh, maybe help us uh, by talking through what our strategy is on the product side because as we look at the business it seems that that's one area which is grossly under leveraged given the parentage of the group i think the way uh, marico and the group know how to build brands and market uh, this seems like almost an easy win if executed well so would love to hear your thoughts on uh, and maybe future plans on how we are uh, attacking that Is that all? Yeah, I think what you said is correct. I think product is a very strong source for revenue, and I think we've seen about a 24 percent odd growth in the last quarter as well for us. A while, of course, we are not mass distributed like some of the brands of Marico, so we are not really in the GPMT space at the moment. Um, large part of our business comes from the clinics, and some part of it comes from e-commerce. So roughly 18 percent of our total revenue actually comes from product, and it has seen good growth. Uh, we are focusing right now on uh, launching many NPDs. I think the pipeline of NPDs that we have been able to bring in over the last couple of years is increased. Uh, we are also getting into newer segments and widening them. So two large segments are hair care. So we are enhancing the portfolio of hair care products. Even in the last two quarters, we have launched products which have worked well for us. At the same time, we are getting into nutraceuticals. Nutraceuticals have also shown good growth for us, and we have also developed our own brand of nutraceuticals. uh which launched at the end of last quarter so we'll start seeing results from there as well 
Uh, so, so of course, uh, there is a difference uh, in the sense that we are not really uh, mass marketed. We are largely focused on the clinic business, but it's a good source of revenue for us. Uh, Kaya will continue to remain a service-focused company, but at the same time, product will be a good uh, good growth uh, driver for us. So right now, we are 18%. We'll continue to see uh, an upscaling of the product business in future. So, you know, when we look at sort of product businesses globally who do services, uh, you are a service first doing product as a sort of second uh, leg. Um, even if we sort of flip that and look at it as a service first business, it just feels that, uh, you know, with some of the packaging that you've done, some of the innovation that you have done in some of your products, uh, it just feels that you are so grossly under-indexed to what is happening uh, in the country. Even some of the D2C brands have scaled up so much faster and I would almost, as a shareholder, I'm biased, but I would like to think that your products are actually better than most of them. Uh, and I think you should, you guys should really sort of think through on the product business a lot more deeply, I would think, um, because I think that could really be an easy win. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think good suggestions and I think good approach and good. thank you for uh, saying that our products are much better than that of the DTC uh, uh, portfolio. It's dumb and bad and I think there's a lot of research that goes into the product. Uh, and we'll continue to focus on this area. There are some plans uh, as and when they come in, we'll actually share it with you. But I think currently it's, it's largely about the clinics and our D2C uh, uh, business. We're also starting to scale up our omni-channel activity. So a large part of what we did in D2C in the last quarter uh, it was uh, supply through stores. Uh, so we're also getting closer to the customer, closer to the territories that we function in. So omni-channel is a business that we are proposing to uh, increase. Uh, yes, is there an opportunity to grow further? Yes, there is definitely something that we are focusing on. Uh, but product, uh, yeah, is an important business for us. And how does uh, product uh, stack up in terms of profitability? What's the cash burn there at what so? Uh, there is no cash burn in the product business for us. And your uh, last year's product business sales were, if I may ask just for that clarification, total? Just one second. Yeah, it's about 39 crores overall in terms of numbers. And do you think this can continue to grow at 20-25% for years to come? Yeah, yeah, we should be able to grow uh, there because we have a good pipeline of, uh, of NPDs that are coming up and we are focusing on that. Okay, uh, thank you. We'll uh, I'll leave you at that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star in one. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. Yeah, okay, please. The next question is from the line of Vijay, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, this is regarding uh, the, you know, um, uh, international business. So we have, we have completely exited international business now after this sale? Yes, after this, once the sale is complete, we will exit the international business. So uh, we can assume uh, there won't be any more impairments, right? Yes, we have taken the maximum impairment. There won't be any more impairment, further impairment 
coming in the next week. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star in one. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Uh, thank you for participating in the conference call today. Uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Dollars Capital Markets Private Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.